Okay friends, so let's begin the very discussion of the JE advanced pattern exercises for complex numbers and quadratic equations. The first question says that modulus of z and modulus of w is exactly the same. Here, if it is equal to k and alpha is given by z minus w bar upon k square plus z w bar, then real part of alpha is what? Now see, the moment I show that alpha plus alpha bar is 0, this itself means that real part of alpha is 0, right? Keeping this in mind, if I consider alpha bar, if alpha is this, alpha bar is z bar minus w bar bar which is w upon k square bar which is k square plus z bar w bar bar which is again w, right? Now it is given to you that mod z equals mod w equals k, mod z equals mod w equals k, this means mod z square equals mod w square equals k square, this is z z bar, this is w w bar equals k square. So z bar is k square by z and w is k square by w bar. So here if you incorporate those values, z bar is k square by z, w is k square by w bar, whole upon k square plus z bar into w. So z bar is k square by z and w is k square by w bar. Simplify this, what do you get is alpha bar is k square common w bar minus z whole upon again you can see k square z w bar plus k square into k square. So k square can come out common and this is what you have. This gets cancelled you are left with w bar minus z upon z w bar plus k square which is nothing but minus alpha. Once you get this, you have got alpha plus alpha bar is 0, which means real part of alpha is 0. And the question was, what is the real part of alpha? And so your answer is that it is 0. Clear? Moving on to the next question, we have if z1 or z and z2 are z1 itself, are non-zero complex numbers such that mod z1 equals mod z2 equals mod of z1 plus z2, then z1 by z2 can be what all values among these? See now over here you need to very clearly understand that mod of z1 by z2 is actually equal to mod z1 upon mod z2. So if you are given this, this means mod of z1 by z2 is actually 1. And you are also given this, that means mod of z1 plus z2 upon mod z2 is 1. This can be written as whole mod of z1 by z2 plus z2 by z2, that is 1. So what do you mean by this equals this, which is equal to 1? That means I can write this as z1 by z2 minus 0 plus 0 iota equals z1 by z2 minus minus 1 plus 0 iota and this is equal to 1. This means z1 by z2's distance from this complex number is same as its distance from this complex number which is 1. That means z1 by z2 lies on the perpendicular bisector of the line segment joining 0 plus 0 iota and minus 1 plus 0 iota. So if that is the situation, it is pretty simple to understand. This is 0 plus 0 iota or 0 comma 0. Ordered pair, this is say minus 1 plus 0 iota, then the perpendicular bisector is this. What is this point? Minus half comma 0. Z1 by Z2 is a complex number lying somewhere on this line. 
Z1 by Z2 lies on the perpendicular bisector of the line segment joining minus 1 comma 0 and 0 comma 0. That means real part of Z1 by Z2 for sure is minus half. So, what is Z1 by Z2? It is minus half plus some a times iota. I do not know what this is. But I know that Z1 by Z2's distance from 0 plus 0 iota is 1. This means magnitude of Z1 by Z2 is 1. So, it means square root of this square plus this square is 1 or I can say 1 by 4 plus a square is 1 square which is 1. So, a comes out to be a square is 1 minus 1 by 4 which is 3 by 4. So, a is plus minus root 3 by 2. If a is plus minus root 3 by 2, z1 by z2 is coming out to be minus 1 by 2 plus minus root 3 by 2 iota. 1 by 2 you take out common, you have minus 1 plus minus root 3 iota which is nothing but omega and omega square. So, z1 by z2 is coming out to be option number b and c which is omega and omega square. Next question, let us see what is it. Modulus of complex number whose reciprocal is given by the first column is what? Match it with the complex numbers given in the second column. Let us do it. First complex number is 1 upon a plus 1 upon b plus iota c. If you take out the exact complex number, it is b plus iota c plus a. So, it is a plus b plus iota c upon a into b plus iota c. This is my reciprocal complex number. So, mod of this is mod of this which is mod of the numerator upon mod of the denominator. Mod of the numerator is under root a plus b whole square plus c square and denominator is mod a common and then magnitude of b plus iota c which is b square plus c square is 1 by mod z. So, mod z will be what? It is mod a into under root b square plus c square upon under root a plus b whole square plus c square. So, mod z in this case turns out to be mod a times b square plus c square under root upon under root is a plus b whole square plus c square. So, a gets matched to r. Clear? Then you have 1 upon a minus iota b minus 1 upon a minus iota c. Let us do that. It is a minus iota c minus a plus iota b upon a minus iota b into a minus iota c. Clear? A, a gets cancelled, you have iota common b minus c upon a minus iota b, a minus iota c. So, magnitude will be what? Magnitude of this upon magnitude of this, right? Mod of iota is 1, so this just becomes mod of b minus c upon under root a square plus b square into under root a square plus c square. So, you basically get mod z equals to reciprocal of this which is under root a square plus b square into under root a square plus c square upon mod of b minus c. So, b gets matched to p. After this, what is it that you have? Let us see. You have a minus iota c plus a minus iota b. Right. So, you basically have a minus iota c plus a minus iota b upon a minus iota b into a minus iota c. So, you have what? a plus a is 2a minus or plus iota or let me take it minus iota times b plus c. Why? Because it is minus iota b minus iota c whole upon a minus iota b a minus iota c. When you take the mod you basically get under root 4a square plus b plus c whole square 
होल अपॉन अंडर रूट ए स्क्वायर प्लस बी स्क्वायर इनटू अंडर रूट ए स्क्वायर प्लस सी स्क्वायर राइट सो ओवर हेयर इफ यू ट्राई टू अंडरस्टैंड फ्रॉम हियर व्हाट आई कैन डू इज इफ यू सी आर यस सो आर एंड क्यू हैव ऑलरेडी बीन टेकन आई एम लेफ्ट विथ वॉट दिस इज पी so r and p have already been taken i'm left with q and s if you try to understand what is this particular point trying to say it is saying 1 upon a minus iota b plus 1 upon a minus iota c so this becomes a minus iota c plus a minus iota b which is 2 times a minus iota times b plus c so it is a plus a minus iota times b plus c okay try to decode how basically you are going to move ahead with this step to actually match it to the correct entry in the second column and then we are going to get back with the question okay guys so in here there is a small correction here it will be b upon a plus iota b plus c upon a minus iota c now if you try to decode the correct option what would that become it will be 1 by z means ab minus iota bc plus ac plus iota bc whole upon a plus iota b into a minus iota c this gets cancelled you are left with a times b plus c upon a plus iota b into a minus iota c this is 1 by z so the magnitude will be magnitude of this upon magnitude of this which will be what magnitude of a magnitude of b plus c upon under root a square plus b square into under root a square plus c square so if you see s happens to be the correct option for this so c gets matched to basically s last is 1 upon a plus iota b plus iota c so 1 upon a plus iota times b plus c this is very easy this is 1 upon under root a square plus b plus c whole square so your answer is under root a square plus b plus c whole square which is q so d gets matched to q moving on to the next we have if the equations this and this have a common root then which among these is the correct option okay so alpha is suppose the common root okay so alpha will satisfy this and this so you have alpha square plus b b alpha plus c is 0 and you also have b alpha square plus c alpha plus 1 is 0 just multiply this by b this by b the entire first equation by b what do you get so you initially had alpha square plus b alpha plus c is 0 you multiplied it by b throughout and then perform this subtraction you basically get this getting cancelled you have b square alpha minus c alpha so it is b square minus c plus b c minus 1 equals 0 so alpha turns out to be 1 minus b c upon b square minus c when you plug this value of alpha in here you basically get 1 minus b c whole square upon b square minus c whole square this is alpha square plus b into alpha plus c is 0 okay now now next what do you get is once you have this being satisfied when you eventually solve this out you get 1 plus b plus c after that you have b c plus b plus c 1 plus b plus c b c square plus b square plus c square minus b c minus b minus c equals 0 clear which you can write as what half of 1 plus b plus c into you will have b minus c whole square plus a plus b minus plus c minus 1 and b minus 1 this is one okay so you will have b minus c whole square plus b minus 1 plus c minus 
that is what you are going to have. Okay? So, here when you get this on simplification, you can just modify it into this and therefore, this is going to imply that for this equation to be equal to 0, either this is 0 or this is 0, which eventually is going to give you an answer that either this is 0 or this is 0. So, it is these conditions which are going to imply having these two quadratic equations to have a common root. Now, when I move ahead with the next question, we have A, B, C, R and G, P. A, B, C, R and G, P, then the equations this and this have a common root then what happens? Okay. So, A, B, C are in G, P. So, you have B square equals A, C or B is root A, C. So, this equation becomes what? This becomes A x square plus 2 B x 2 root A, C into x plus C equals 0. C you can write as root C whole square, A you can write as root A whole square, this becomes root A x plus root C whole square. So, x turns out to be minus root C by root A with multiplicity 2. Because this is a common root, so it will satisfy the next equation also. So, you have D x square, D and square of this which is C by A plus 2 e x 2 e x x is minus root c by root a plus f equals 0. Send this to the right hand side you have d c by a plus f equals 2 e root c by root a divide throughout by c you get d by a plus f by c plus 2 e by or this is equal to 2 e by root a c, but root a c is b. So, this becomes 2 e by b. So, you are getting twice of e by b is d by a plus f by c, which means d by a plus e d by a e by b and f by c are in a p. So, you are getting d by a e by b f by c are in actually arithmetic progression. Then you have alpha and beta the roots of this equation, then equation whose roots are the respective ones given in the first column is what? Let us see. You know this transformation. If you want an equation whose roots are minus 1 by alpha, minus 1 by beta, negative of the reciprocal of the roots of the given equation, you basically replace x by minus 1 by x in this equation. So, it is a into minus 1 by x whole square, which is a by x square minus b by x plus c is 0. So, you get a minus b x plus c x square equals 0. That is c x square minus b x plus a. So, a gets matched to r. Clear? Then you have minus alpha minus beta replace x by minus x. Replace x by minus x you get a x square plus b x plus c is 0. So, you get a x square minus b x plus c. So, this gets matched to s b gets matched to s alpha square beta square replace x by root x. So, you get a root x whole square plus b root x plus c is 0. So, you get a x plus c equals minus b root x. Right square both sides you get a square x square plus c square plus 2 a c x equals b square x. So, you get a square x square plus 2 a c minus b square x plus c square equals 0, which is this equation that is q. Then you have 2 alpha and 2 beta replace x by x by 2. When you do that, you get a x square plus b x plus c. So, you get a x square by 4 plus b x by 2 plus c equals 0. So, you get a x square plus 2 b x plus 4 c. a x square plus 2 b x plus 4 c that is p. So, d gets matched to p. Clear? After this you have statement 1 and statement 2 given to you. If a, b, c are real numbers 2a plus 3b plus 6c is 0, then equation this has at least one root in 0, 1 closed interval. 
Now for this the moment roots come into picture we basically recall the Rolle's theorem very very frequently. What do we do? We define a function f x such that its derivative is a x square plus b x plus c. So I talk about 1 by 3 a x cube plus 1 by 2 b x square plus c. Now this particular function is continuous on closed interval 0 1. It is differentiable on open interval 0 1 and if you talk about f of 0, f of 0 is clearly 0 and f of 1 if you talk about it is a by 3 plus b by 2 plus c. If you take out the LCM as 6, you have 2a plus 3b plus 6c and 2a plus 3b plus 6c is already given in the question to be 0. So, you get this also as 0. f of 0 is 0, f of 1 is 0. In 0, 1 closed interval, it is continuous. In the open one, it is differentiable. Therefore, there exists alpha such that f dash alpha is 0. f dash alpha means a alpha square plus b alpha plus c is 0. But a x square plus b x plus c is the equation given to you that means alpha is satisfying that equation which implies alpha is a root of a x square plus b x plus c equals 0. So yes in 0 1 interval a x square plus b x plus c definitely has a root. So this equation this statement is true. Next says if a continuous function f defined on R assumes both positive and negative values then it vanishes at least once. Yes of course this is true that if a function is assuming both positive and negative so to go from positive to negative it has to intersect x axis at least once and therefore it definitely has a root at least. But this is not giving you any kind of implication for statement 1. So I can say that statement 1 is true, statement 2 is true, statement 2 is not a correct explanation for statement 1. Let us move on to the next question again it is related to the statement. What does it say if all the 4 roots of this equation are positive then a is 6 and b is 4. Let us see. All the 4 roots of this are positive. So let x1, x2, x3 and x4 be the 4 roots. They are all positive you know that sum of the roots will be what? It is minus of coefficient of x cube upon coefficient of x to the power 4. So minus of minus 4 by 1 which is 4 and if I talk about the product of the roots, it is constant term upon coefficient of x to the power 4 which is 1 upon 1 which is 1. So I can say 1 upon 4 times x1 plus x2 plus x3 plus x4. What is this this is arithmetic mean of the 4 positive numbers. What is this? This is 4. So 1 by 4 into 4 is 1. And if I talk about x1 into x2 into x3 into x4 to the power 1 by 4. This product is actually 1. 1 to the power 1 by 4 is 1. This is also 1 and this is nothing but geometric mean of x1, x2, x3 and x4. Both of them are coming out to be the same. Arithmetic mean comes out to be equal to geometric mean if and only if all these terms are equal to 1. Right? And therefore my equation whose roots are these 4 becomes what? x minus 1 whole to the power 4. When you expand this by binomial theorem, you basically get a that is the coefficient of x square comes out to be 6 and coefficient of x comes out to be minus 4. So, b is actually 4. So, statement 1 very nicely happens to be true. Also, if polynomial equation has 4 positive roots and the polynomial equation p dash x has 3 positive roots. Now, see polynomial is always continuous and differentiable throughout the entire real line. If it has 4 positive roots between between any two consecutive positive roots will be lying at least one positive root of its derivative. So if there are four positive roots of p x, p dash x is also a polynomial, it is also continuous and differentiable, right? And that particular polynomial is going to have three positive roots because between any two positive roots of p x lies at least one positive root of p dash x. 
clear? So there are four positive roots of px, so at least three positive roots will be there of p dash. And therefore statement 4 is also true, this is following by Rolle's theorem, but this is not giving a correct implication for this. So I will say statement 1 and statement 2 are true, but statement 2 is again not a correct explanation for statement 1. Next question says that the smallest value of k for which both the roots of this equation are real and distinct and have the value at least 4. Okay. So this is pretty simple, here is a quadratic equation and you know when does the quadratic equation have real and distinct roots when its discriminant is strictly positive. So b square, this is b square minus 4 into a into c, this is positive. This when you solve you get 64 k square minus 64 k square plus 64k minus 64. So 64 common k minus 1 is positive that means k minus 1 is positive, k is greater than 1 but k is an integer that means k is greater than equal to 2. Also suppose alpha and beta are the roots, it is given that the least value they have is 4 so alpha is greater than equal to 4 and beta is greater than equal to 4. Then alpha plus beta is greater than equal to 8 and alpha into beta is greater than equal to 16. Sum of the roots is minus b by a. Sum of the roots is 8k by 1. So alpha plus beta is 8k and or this is greater than equal to 8k and alpha into beta is c by a which is 16 into k square minus k plus 1. This is greater than or equal to 16 into k square minus k plus 1. This is, I can say this is greater than or equal to 16 and alpha plus beta is 8k. 8k is greater than or equal to 8. So you get k is greater than or equal to 1 and k into k minus 1 is greater than or equal to 0. From here you are going to get that. This is 16k square minus 16k plus 16. So this gets cancelled out. You get 16k square minus 16k is greater than or equal to 0. So 16 comes out common. You get what k square minus k is greater than or equal to 0 or k k minus 1 is greater than or equal to 0. From here you basically get the common portion is this. So k is greater than or equal to 1, k is greater than or equal to 2. The minimum value that you can get is k equals 2. So the integer associated to this question is 2. Next question says what let a, b, c be complex numbers such that a plus b plus c is 0, mod a plus mod, mod b, mod a equals mod c plus mod c. So all these three terms a, b, c have the same modulus that is 1, then what is the value of this expression? Okay. If I talk about mod of b minus c whole square plus mod of b plus c whole square, you know these identities, this you know, this you know when you expand, you get twice of mod b square plus mod c square, right? This is mod of b minus c whole square. Now mod of b plus c, see b plus c is minus a, so mod of b plus c is mod of minus a whole square, this is twice of mod b is 1, mod c is 1, so this is 1 plus 1. Mod a is actually 1, so 1 square is 1. So you get mod of b minus c whole square is 2 into 2, 4, 4 minus 1 is 3, so b minus c mod is root 3. Exactly in a similar fashion you can show mod of a minus b is root 3 and mod of a minus c is root 3. The moment you show this, you get mod of a minus b whole cube, that is root 3 whole cube. Root 3 whole cube becomes 3 root 3, right? Plus, again 3 root 3, plus 3 root 3, minus thrice of mod of a minus b, which is root 3, root 3 into root 3 into root 3, so 3 root 3. <coughs> this is 0. So you get this plus this plus this minus thrice of this which is 0. Integer associated to this is 0. 
So practice them very nicely. That's it from my side. Thank you.